Hello everybody, my name is Jonathan Reeves from Innovative Vector Wits BIM. Today we're going to look at part one of our new tutorial series, looking at the visualization of Falling Water by Frank Lloyd Wright. One of my favorite buildings in the world and one of the greatest pieces of architecture of the 20th century, I'm sure you'll agree. We're going to start by taking this fantastic model from SketchUp and exporting it into Twinmotion and we're going to look at how we create the landscape, add vibrancy and atmosphere, add life to the model, um, lighting and also visualize by setting up views and animations. Now I really hope you enjoy the three part series we're intending to make. We're going to introduce part one, we're going to create the landscape and then we're going to add trees and vegetation. Then we're going to move along and look at part two. We're going to add some details, furniture, people, animals, and then the atmospherics, <clears throat> things like the water, the mist, and the atmosphere. And then for part three, we're going to look at lights, cameras, and action, how we set up views, uh, set up animations to record, and then actually render those out at high quality. So I'm really excited to share this tutorial with you. I've been thinking about doing this one for a long time. This is one of my favorite buildings, as I say, ever and I think our interpretation of this has just been really really enjoyable and fun to do so please do like and subscribe to the channel to get updates on the new videos. Um, here we can see a lovely snow scene I hope you enjoy that and then you'll see we've got some different aspects to the model. Anyway without further ado I'm going to let you jump into the video and relax so sit back and enjoy the video thanks for watching bye bye. Okay, so let's go ahead and open the model in SketchUp. So that's our first step. We'll show you the link how to get hold of this from the 3D warehouse. Um, so here's the model in SketchUp. You can see it's a really nice model. Um, there's the, the main building and the, um, the guest pavilion up at the top, um, which a lot of people don't know about actually with falling water. Also, um, you can see we've got the landscape in there. So having a quick look at the model, let's go ahead now and open this in twin motion. Um, and basically, if, for those of you who don't know, Twin Motion is still free. It was going to be November, but now it's actually been extended till the new year. So go ahead and download a copy of that, guys, while it's free. It's amazing software. So here we are importing the model. This is our very first step. Um, you can see we're going to collapse the hierarchy. We're not going to actually. We're going to keep the hierarchy of the model. And we're going to basically process the data. And here we go. Here is our model. So the first thing you'll notice when the model comes in is that you can navigate around using the traditional gaming keys, uh, WASDA. So if you're a bit of a gamer like Minecraft or anything like that, you're going to be very comfortable with navigating around. So here we can see we've got a groundscape that we're just kind of moving up and down and we're just having a bit of a, a look at the impact of the model itself. So the starting ground in Twin Motion is something that we can turn off and actually add in um, a flat landscape from the landscapes palette. Just before we kind of go ahead and do a bit more work there though, we're actually going to do a little bit of work on hiding the, the trees. Uh, it's going to make life a bit easier for us. So to do that, we've opened up the uh, material, the, the object manager on the right hand side of Twinmotion. And you can see we've just clicked on the trees to identify them and hidden them. So next, we're going to look at sculpting the terrain. So when we click on the uh, landscape tool, you'll see that you get um, basically the ability to sculpt or paint. Now we're going to deal with sculpting first of all. So here we're raising the landscape and it's very straightforward. It's almost like painting in 3D with a brush. Um, basically we can just adjust the diameter of the brush and also the intensity of the brush just to kind of fiddle around with the settings. Um, you can also play with the shape of the brush, but let's just stick with the, the standard circle for now. Now you can kind of get an impression of what we're doing here. We're trying to raise the landscape um, so that it kind of corresponds a bit more closely with the, uh, the landscape that came in from SketchUp. But we're not being too um, precious about it because we know that a bit later on we'll be able to kind of actually diminish the landscape or actually uh, lower it and flatten it and so on. So th that's the first sort of goal here is just to basically fairly crudely cover up the SketchUp landscape um, with the twin motion landscape and then and you'll see in a moment how we actually reduce that down. So I'm speeding up the video a little bit now just so you can see how quick we're going to get this done um, and yeah enjoy this bit guys it does it's really really fun to do as I say it really feels like you're 3D painting. 
Um, you'll notice with Twin Motion, the higher you go with the landscape, um, it kind of converts the, uh, the grassy area to more of a rocky outcrop. And that's quite a nice feature as well. Okay, so it looks like we've kind of got the first stage done. Now, don't worry too much if the buildings seem to have disappeared because the next thing we're going to do is start to flatten off and sort of take the rough edges off this landscape. Um, so we're smoothing out the peaks. And that's the third mode of the uh, sculpting tools, as you can see on the twin motion bar. So we're just kind of going to sculpting this out and smoothing it down a bit so it's not quite so sharp. Um, and then let's have a look in a minute. We're going to have a look at once we've done this <coughs> in actually lowering the landscape in the areas that we need. So again, all depends how you want to do this. Um, you can be a bit more careful, perhaps raising it up or you can kind of like, so we're moving on now to the lowering, you can see and we're just slowly revealing the SketchUp landscape a little bit more, just so we know that we've kind of got the groundscape looking, looking about right. Now, it's quite important to keep adjusting the intensity and the diameter of your brush as you do this. Um, I think it's really fun. It's really satisfying. I have to say, this does demand a reasonably good computer, and um, I've just bought a really, really good PC. After being a Mac user for 20 years, um, I bought my first ever PC, and I have to say, I'm very chuffed with it. It's kind of like a standalone workstation, and uh, we've got a really good sort of processor, 12 core, 24 thread processor, an AMD one. But the most important thing for this kind of work is the graphics card. So we went for the uh, RTX 2080 Ti, Probably the best graphics card you can get for the money out there at the moment. Um, I've also tested Twin Motion on graphics cards, maybe not quite as good as that, and it works super well. So just make sure you've got a decent graphics card, uh, probably 8 gig minimum, and a decent sort of level of speed. Something like a 1080 would do a good job. Okay, so you can see it's really coming together now. We're just sort of revealing the um, underlying SketchUp landscape a little bit more. And we know that our groundscape that we've created is pretty in line with the SketchUp model now. So now we can begin to move on to the next stage. So we're going to select that landscape and we're going to hide it in the manager. So by turning it on and off, we can kind of see that what we've done underneath is pretty similar in terms of height to the SketchUp model. Now, it's also really sensible to rename things in the manager and that helps you identify them and find them. And also you do see there's a search dialogue. So what we're doing here, we're essentially just turning on and off the various elements of the SketchUp model landscape. Um, it all seems to be divided into little bits, so that's not unusual. Um, gradually we're going to get there and we're going to make a new container for that landscape. Containers, think of containers as kind of like groups. Um, so a bit like a big carrier bag. We're going to put everything into that container to hold it all together. And this means that it's nice and easy for us to be able to turn it on and off as one thing. So it makes it a lot easier for the organization. So all you do, you drag the elements that you would like into the containers. Uh, it can be a little bit fiddly sometimes, but there we go, we've dragged it in and now we can turn them off uh, as a group if you like. So that's my little tip, definitely try and stay organized in Twin Motion. It does make it a lot more uh, straightforward to manage your model, particularly as it gets a bit more complicated. Okay, cool. So I think we're nearly just about done with the landscape. We're just getting these remaining fragments of, uh, of the SketchUp model landscape there. Um, you can see we're leaving the, the river and the area around there because we will be requiring that. Excellent. So let's have a little look around the model. So we'll spin around a bit more. Yep, you can see we've got most of the landscape available to turn on and off in different sections. Awesome. That's looking good. So well worth that extra time spent organizing. So we're ready for the, the, uh, the next phase now. So we're going to do a little bit more sculpting. Um, just before we do that though, we're going to go down and select some beautiful water. We're just going to drag that onto the polygons that make up the river from the SketchUp model. Now immediately you can see the Twin Motion model has started to actually come to life a bit more. Um, just make sure you use the right kind of water. Um, we've got a bit more on the waterfall there. And you can see it, you know, the water's moving, shimmering, it's got some reflections and we can do a lot more with that as you'll see a bit later on. So yeah, it's looking nice already. Okay, good. So we've got some nasty jaggy edges um, around this river. So in a bit, we're going to have a look at how we sort that out. Let's turn off this polygon here and basically let's get a bit more sculpting, but a nice small brush and a low density so that we can start to add these sort of riverbanks. There we go, in a nice sort of little bit of detail. 
Now, do remember to keep saving your model as you go. There's nothing worse than losing the work uh, that you've already done. Um, so this is the way we did, you know, the model. We took the approach of sort of trying to uh, approximate the, the SketchUp landscape. Now we're just sort of raising up ever so slightly so that it's in front of, and we can kind of keep turning it off and on uh, to check what's going on. So yeah, you know, there might be some different approaches you guys would take, but this is how we, we found it worked best. Um, and it doesn't take that long, and it's actually quite satisfying work. So it really feels like you're painting in 3D. So I'm going to sit back and uh, let you watch the rest of the video. We're going to speed up for a while, and I'll come back in a while. So as you can see, it's really starting to come together now. Now it's actually very satisfying work and I think you'll enjoy, although it takes a little bit of time, but the good thing is you can just keep working on this as much as you need to. Uh, but please do only remember to spend um, lots of time working on the bits of the model that you're going to see. So you know, it's kind of helpful just to bear that in mind. But it can be quite addictive, as you can see we've got a bit carried away, probably doing bits of the model that we may or may not see a bit further upstream. I really hope you've enjoyed the landscape side of this tutorial. In the second section of part one, we're going to be looking at all the grass and the trees and the plants and the rocks, all the soft stuff. So please join us for the second video coming shortly. See you soon. Bye bye.